Hello and welcome to Skeindo Knits. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London. And you can find me on Instagram at Skeindo and I am Skeindo Knits as a designer on Ravelry. And don't forget my Ravelry group called Skeindo Knits, which is the best place to take part in knit alongs and giveaways and the general Skeindo Knits community. Hey, hello, how are you doing? To new viewers, this is my knitting podcast, knitting talk show, where we sit and talk about knitting, hopefully back to a weekly schedule again, yes! So I just talk about stuff that I'm knitting, uh, stuff that I'm designing, because I do make knitting patterns. And yeah, to returning viewers, hello, hi, how you doing? This is going to be a relatively short, uh, less content video than what I normally do, because I wasn't really planning on recording this soon after the last episode. I haven't done weekly videos in a long while. But I thought, you know what, the light is good. Decent hair day, fairy lights, and at least one finished object literally a second ago. <sighs> That's good enough. <laughs> I think I need to like put the bar a bit further down because I do a lot of things and I can't wait until I can beef up a whole hour long episode. Just, what, what we got is what we got. So. I want to start off by mentioning my knit-alongs. I am running two knit-alongs at the moment. It is the year-long skein in its garment cal, which is basically all about knitting any of my garment patterns, be it cardigan, sweaters, skirt, singular. <laughs> uh, and you just have to have started and finished it during 2020 and you enter it in the Ravelry thread that I have just started and important note that I just remembered for that thread is please please indicate whether you do or do not wish for your finished item to be shown on this podcast because I actually really want to show uh, what some of you guys have made so I might just start doing that now. <laughs> for letting me show you your projects and if you obviously want to enter to be in the price draw and to be featured on here then uh, please go ahead and do so. So yeah as ever one finished garment is one entry in the price draw and if anyone wants to send prices obviously that's more than welcomed and yeah the other knit along that I'm running started I, I just decided that start date could be 1st of October, which is to knit any patterns from my Sarbi Mitten Club. Clubs, plural. I think I explained this in the last episode, if memory serves me right. And yeah, basically because I am really missing my annual Sarbi Mitten Club and I have seen a lot of people also having missed it and having knitted up some of my past mitten patterns and therefore I thought Okay, well, let's just do them all, you know, one cow to rule them all. That's a, that's a nice Soren analogy. Um, what, what else would make you want to knit mittens than the Dark Lord of uh, Middle Earth? Anywho, anywho. Uh, <laughs> so the rules for that is quite simple. You can knit any pattern that is from either of my three Sarbe Mitten clubs. So I think that means we have 15 mitten patterns to choose from. They're all Sarbe Mitten style patterns and yeah. Uh, we're gonna have that end at the end of the year as well so we can start off 2021 with the uh, you know i was gonna say clean sheets that's, that's not how that phrase goes <laughs> that's like one of the things about being foreign having english as your second language all those like figures of speech they just never come out right <laughs> 
which is fine, it's fine. Anyway, my knitting this week uh, is very little to talk about because it's barely been a week since the last time I recorded and you can really only do so much and so when I also cannot yet show you my designs, I will just show you, well, I will show you one design because I actually just published one and hopefully you will have seen that by now because I think I'm going to put that up today, which is going to be days ago by the time you watch this. Oh wow, this is very timey why me confusing. Uh, yeah, and that is the Pure False sweater. And I'm really excited about the video that I made to kind of launch the pattern because that's the sort of thing I want to do from now on because that gives me time to talk about the pattern in a, in a, little, bit, in a little bit more detail. <laughs> And I get to show what my test letters have done. I get to add a little jingle to it. You know, what's there not to like, really? So, Pierre Foss, without further ado, right? It is a uh, pitch dark black. You can hardly, it's very getting very overexposed here. My camera's really struggling to show you this very, very, very dark sweater because I, I want it a black sweater. And I, that, that's just the decision that I made. So, there's not much to say about this and it's up to about a hour into chunky weight because you hold together a fingering weight yarn with a fuzzy fingering weight yarn. So while well, usually fingering plus fingering kind of equals, mm, I'm gonna say worsted, this gets you more up to iron and chunky because it's fuzzy and it fills up all those gaps that you get from knitting it rather loosely, which also means you get a very nice light fabric. I've had my test knitters knit in a lot of different types of yarns and I'm just repeating myself from, from the last video that I did about this, but I did wanna just announce that this pattern is out. I am very excited to have kind of relaunched myself, if you will, after the whole PhD thing, although saying after is a strong word because it never got submitted. I talked about that in the last episode, so we don't need to go there. Um, but certainly I am now feeling very ready to start launching patterns again. And the main reason why is because I have finally got my act together, arguably three years later than I should have, but still I've got my act together and started a newsletter. I should have done this three years ago, but here we are and I'm actually really excited to have started it. Uh, my vision for the newsletter is basically just to have a very simple way for you guys to find out what's going on because uh, I struggle to reach all of you. Uh, I, I touched upon this a little bit in in the last video that I made to launch Pure Files because <laughs> I don't know how interesting this is to you guys but it's, as someone who relies a bit on social media to do the things that I do um, you have to play along with the algorithms and the algorithms are really not usually on your side and so say I have 26.7 thousand followers on Instagram I reached about 3,000 of them <laughs> 3,000 is a lot of people but it's not 27,000 people so that that's frustrating um, YouTube as well is also algorithm driven and people who do not subscribe are very likely to miss on videos which is kind of why I always like can you just like subscribe please and thank you it, it helps me a great deal um, <laughs> and that's again like I will put in an hour-long video and then people may not have time to watch it and they just don't know what I'm doing and then I put stuff on Ravelry but then people aren't on Ravelry and quite frankly it's a quite confusing place to put it because they put it in my group and the groups are kind of messy and it's just the whole mess that could be made so much easier had I just three years ago started a newsletter but I'm doing it now so it is actually a thing that I can do now it's just a lot simpler than anything any other way of finding out what I'm up to what my latest pattern is or if I'm going to a festival I and mean, we don't do festivals anymore now but you know on the other side <laughs> uh, I am gonna try to keep them quite brief and not too frequent. I don't like when newsletters come out just for the sake of it. I want to just release them when I actually have something to tell you. So that's going to be, you know, when there's something to tell you, basically. <laughs> so don't worry about being spammed. If you're not someone who is super keen on getting very long, very frequent newsletters, where there's a lot of things to wrap your head around, don't worry. This is not one of those. This is just a short bulletin in your inbox that means you're not missing out on anything and you're not finding out stuff too late basically um yeah 
so that was a lot of chatter about that newsletter. I'm going to link to how you sign up to that below. And the reason I'm mentioning it alongside this sweater, if I didn't say already, is because you get the sweater pattern for free if you sign up. Not that I think anyone needs to be incentivized for the newsletter. It was actually something that I planned from the get-go of designing this, is that I wanted to give back. And I, it just sort of happens to coincide with the newsletter. And I thought, that's a very nice way of giving back. I do feel very fortunate that I get to live, make a living of selling knitting patterns. And that doesn't mean that I undervalue all the work that I do or anything like that by giving this away for free. But it's just something I wanted to do. Do I have to rationalize everything? I don't think so. Do I sweater? Do I? I literally, I, that's, that's what I wanted. I want to give back to people who sign up to the newsletter. I want to give back to people who are interested to hear what is happening with skein in it because I have a lot of great plans I've just been teasing about them a lot lately and yeah long story short I just want to make it easier for you to just make sure that you are informed about cool fun cool 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 fun things stuff I just mixed up the words think things and stuff okay I'm gonna move on I can't talk today goodness me I'm glad this is gonna be a short one <laughs> So just to wrap it up, this is Pure Fast. It is a top-down contiguous sweater. You could think of it as a quicker floof, if you will. It is floofy. It does have the contiguous method. It's just very simple. It's sort of loose and oversized, warm, very wearable. I really like it. I want it a lot. Um, it's easier to see it if you don't make it in black, but yeah, Pure Fast. <laughs> Now, uh, before I start talking about my only project to talk about on this episode, which is finished, uh, I have some exciting news for me. Not for it's not knitting related, but it is related because as I was recording last week's episode, the recipient of this what <laughs> we can talk about that later. Basically, my nephew was born. As I was recording last week's episode, I got the news when I was exporting the episode after having edited it and had to sit on my hands for 24 hours before I was allowed to post that on Instagram. <laughs> so I am officially Auntie Skandier and I became Auntie Skandier before I became Dr. Skandier, so that's not something I saw coming, but there we are! I have a nephew. He's really cute. I don't like, I'm, I'm not big like. I kind of prefer puppies and kittens to babies, but that is a very cute baby. Like he's like, he could model baby dolls. Like he could just like be like the, the, the blueprint. <laughs> I am very good at giving compliments. I'm not, uh, yeah, he is really cute. I am bummed out as heck that I don't get to see him thanks to the whole Corona situation. And so I do, pester my very busy, exhausted and sleep deprived sister to get daily updates about his tiny little face. Um, so yeah, that, that's what's happened there. Family has expanded by one little individual. <laughs> and he has also received all the knits that I have made for him. So I got to see that live when they were unwrapping it and literally even the smallest hats that I'd made for him that I was sure was newborn size is still way too big so it's a good thing they grow really but yeah he, he's uh out and about now so that's cool so that kind of we all knew this would happen that I would feel like I need to knit him some more now that he like officially exists with a name and stuff I'm gonna be knitting more stuff for him because I got a lot of like small bits of yarn that is not gonna be much of a sweater for me, but it could work out for him. So I've already got to the leftover yarn for the cable sweater I made for one of my best friends last year for Christmas. Do you remember that? The whole Michelle Wong cable galore thing that I'm like, I have no idea. That I, I, I still can't get over that I made that. But I had two 100 gram skeins left over, which turns out was exactly enough to make this onesie. So this onesie is the Felix dress. Don't get confused by the word dress. The word dress in Norwegian, spelled the exact same way, means suit. So you can imagine how fun it was to learn what the English word dress was when you were in like 
elementary school and you're like, oh, wow, English people call dresses dress, ha ha ha. But then we learned about the Swedish that called dress suit costume. So that's, that's language. Anyway, I'm getting very sidetracked, but it's a good thing I don't have a lot to talk about, so that doesn't really affect anything. Um, it's really cute. So this is a Sticky Zilla pattern, and you know I've been all over her patterns really since the whole baby shenanigans was announced, because I think Tina's patterns are really, really cool. Uh, she does a lot of top-down constructions. I think her patterns are well written. I think she's paid a lot of thought to actually what fits babies and toddlers and children because she's got a few of them herself so I trust her patterns a great deal so which is a good thing because I was knitting this and I was knitting you know top down down the raglan and it was done very quickly which you know that doesn't happen if you do it for yourself that's quite a big piece with the whole sleeve thing and all the stitches you know and so I was down here right I done the whole yoke and I'm like this is quick this is so quick and then I did the whole body flat yeah and it got longer and longer and longer and then I had to join in the round and it's still being knitted longer and I'm like how long are babies and I'm asking my flatmate and I'm like how, how long are they and I basically reason that babies are probably a bit like cats you know when you lift them and they just kind of get longer and longer and they just kind of stretch and get very long I think I think that's the answer or, or, or it's just that I knit a six month size because that was a smaller size in the pattern that's also an option. Uh, so it's really cute. I am very happy with it. It is literally just bound off. I was like speed knitting the final sleeve and woven the end and all I have left to do is to give it a gentle block. Uh, the way I block garments is I soak it in water, just chuck it all together in a bowl of water let it soak for at least half an hour if not longer and then I take it out I gently kind of press out the water no twisting here you want to be careful with the fiber and then I roll it into a towel and I sit on it and whatever tights I'm wearing get a little bit wet but then most of the water will have been squeezed out and I can lay it flat to dry and that's usually when I kind of tweak the rib a bit and just kind of gently makes it just try to make it a bit more even to the rest of the leg so it doesn't like phew. but I don't try to ruin the rib either you don't want to like go full on when it's wet because then it doesn't do what rib's supposed to do so you just fine balance there uh but yeah I need to sew in buttons and then it's basically done I don't know that I have the right buttons for it but I always get my buttons in Norway and I'm running short because I haven't been to Norway in ages so yeah anyway I'm really really pleased with the pattern. I think like I said Tina's patterns are super. She's actually just about to release a book for wait oh, let me backtrack a bit there. She has done a lot of books for baby knits and children's knits but now she's finally releasing her first garment and knit knitting book in general for women and I want it but it's in Norway. Oh, so I'm gonna put that on my Christmas wish list I think. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's supposed to overlap on the side here, so like that. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what it's supposed to look like. I feel like I'm doing a terrible job of showing this. Uh, it had some really nice short rows at the lower bum here, so you can fit a good, a good diaper bum in here. I always love when I add a bit of short rows for the back, uh, the low, the, the bum for the babies. I think without that, it's just not as good as it could have been. So I love that. Tina always puts that into her patterns. The whole like top down and short row thing and all that stuff is a bit rare to come by in Norwegian commercial patterns. So I'm really happy to come across uh, indie designers that can sort of, I guess, unite the simplicity of a uh, Norwegian pattern writer, but also include those new and clever construction methods. Can I, oh, you know, we can pretend I'm holding my nephew. <laughs> Because it's quite heavy, it's like 200 grams this thing, and I think my nephew came out half a kilo. So he's a substantial little one. Maybe he was a bit less than that, I don't remember. Am I supposed to remember that? I remember his name, I was like about it, but yeah. Finished object, it just took me a couple of days. Uh, I realised I haven't talked a lot about the yarn. I used um, Hobium's natural wool. They sent me a 
good pile of yarn about like two years ago and I'm still getting through it. I swear, like when they sent it to me and the parcel had arrived, I say parcel. I thought someone in the flat share had ordered a duvet. It was huge and it was all yarn that they just gave me. So Hobium yarn that had closed down for a bit, but now they're back up. Last time I checked and they got quite nice wool. If you check out their La Mia range, they got this natural yarn that come in different shades of brown and white. Uh, there's only one shade of white on it. <laughs> and they also have their just wool, this recycled wool that is very, very nice. And I quite like to have more of that actually. And it's really affordable, like really affordable. Uh, so that's that. I finally got through this whole ginormous sweater quantity. Only that I only have another sweater quantity left because they sent me this light taupe and also brown. So I still have a brown sweater quantity. And the funny thing is, like, you guys haven't seen this yet because I'm going to show you later, like another time, but everything I'm knitting for Christmas so far is in this colour. It's all different things and different yarns, but they all seem to be like natural grey brown, which is a complete coincidence. But so far, these knits are for well, my nephew, my sister, and my mum, and they're likely to be opening these presents simultaneously. So that's gonna be a laugh, even though I probably won't be there to to laugh. It's uh, yeah. Anyway, funny coincidence. And now we are at the end of this very short and sweet episode. I did, I did tell you it was going to be very short. A lot of the times I say that and it's not true. But this time I only have my acquisitions left. And they did actually arrive on the day that I was recording the last episode. But it's the, one of those curses of the Skin and Its podcast that uh, the yarn that I'm waiting for will inevitably come just after I finish recording. Every time. It's not that I order yarn so much that it's just something's gonna be appearing after recording. I know, there are a few times that I record, it will appear after recording. Well, there are a few times I order yarn. Anyway, <laughs> the yarn appeared. Uh, so this is something I kind of vicariously purchased in Norway. So a friend of mine bought them for me um, and sent them to me along with some Norwegian chocolate. Uh, so I just wanna show you, because I think it's exciting. First, I got three skeins of Sur by Hillesvog. Now, I know I said three and I'm holding up two. It is because I am designing something with this wonderful yarn that is a pain to get hold of in Europe outside of Norway. I know that Troll and Wool have some of these, but they don't have the full color range because Hillesvog launched some more, I guess, Ellie-like colors. Uh, but a year ago and Troll and Wool don't have those yet. I hope very soon. I did ask them they did say soon, but they've said soon for a while. So I don't know, but keep checking. But don't take the yarn away from me. <laughs> so I had a friend from Norway send these to me. I am knitting on the third skein already. I'm knitting it along with a dark kind of charcoal and it's gonna be this all over color work cardigan and it's looking very good right now. It's looking very good. I'm very, I'm very excited. Um, I don't know when that's gonna come out because it, as you can imagine it takes a bit of time But it actually isn't the slowest knit in the world because this is a DK weight yarn it is DK leaning on sport weight, but I'm kind of knitting it up in a more worsted sort of weight Which when you hold it, you know two strands because it's stranded color work. I actually found that the fabric is perfect I love it. So quick color work knit with fairly light yarns very light big color work Cardigan thing it's work just it's working out really well it's gonna be wearable, it's gonna be like kind of portable. I'm excited and it's massive and oversized and just color work galore. So yeah, this is Hillesvog Lamb's Wool DK. They have the same yarn on fingering weight called Vilja, which I have worked with a lot. I believe my Skumbling slash Nightfall cardigan was designed in this yarn and uh, my Islander sweater was designed in it. The Vilja yarn, not the Sula. I'm not designing Sula yet, but I will. And it's really, really nice and uh, very versatile. And I just wish it was more available around because so far you can really only get the white version of this yarn from Knit With Attitude and Isolda. And I do wish they were taking more of the colorways, but uh, maybe they need more people kind of gently nudging them to that idea. You know, just, just throwing the idea out there. Now I still have a whole shopping bag of yarn here. I'm gonna just throw, pull out one skein of each color. I don't know how many of these I got. I think I got like five and one 
the grey. And this yarn. <sighs> Hillis Vogue just launched two new yarns. Uh, they launched Varda and Vida. This is Vida. So the Varda is like their pelt wool yarn, Solia and Tinda. And it's kind of more on the Aran side of the yarn weights. Um, could probably nail up to worsted as well, but I'm gonna say it's Aran weight. It's a very good substitute for something like Let Lopi. I'm imagining this is gonna be worked into a lot of these Lopa Pesa yokes, the Icelandic yokes that we know and love. The color range is awesome. I don't know what happened with the color range of Sword and Vilje because Hillis Vogue generally have amazing color ranges. So I think they were just trying to like make baby colors or something but now they are back in full force and I, so yeah I got the vide yarn I'm a little bit confused about what vide is because what it says here is Norwegian lambs wool 100% Norwegian wool but what I've heard is that it's a lambs wool pelt wool mix but I'm also wondering if this is maybe the lambs wool of the pelt wool sheep I am not entirely clear on that so you may want to check the website if it's a a blend or actually the age of the pelt wool sheep when it got shaved so <laughs> I can't really tell you that I should should have looked that up but here we are so it's got 200 meters per 100 grams they say it knits up to about an 18 stitch gauge um, yeah 100% Norwegian wool and gloriously heathered I need to show you a close-up of this honestly this yarn oh I love it. I love it so much. I did get a sweater quantity in this colorway. I'm guessing this could be a nice contrast. I have no idea what I would make with it. I'm thinking probably a design. Because I don't, I have a lot of designs coming out and they are all the sort of speed and weight of my usual patterns, you know, like Winterfjell, like Nordbakken, like Utra, like Islander, like the neither slow nor quick knits. But I've been wanting to design more quick knits for the more sort of distant future. So that's obviously that full on color work cardigan I talked about. But I think also this could be a nice sort of, you know, six millimeter type project. Obviously choose the needle size that gives you gauge. So those are some of the things that I'm thinking now. I think this is a great sweater yarn. I think it would be a great shawl yarn, a great hat yarn. I would basically make anything except socks because I like socks and I like nylon in my socks. But people differ on that. Some people want to avoid anything plastic for you know, those reasons. Uh, so very nice all round yarn in our own weight that is gonna be very stickable. And that is probably one of the things that makes me most excited about this yarn is the stickability. What do I mean by that? Well, you can stick any yarn. How you secure it will depend on the yarn. And really it's only wool and spun 100% sheep wool that isn't of a very slick breed, slick fiber breed, I don't know what the breed is. That's really the only yarn that you can just cut through without securing and that's really the only yarn I also trust with the crochet method. So any other type of yarn like worsted spun, non superwashed, I would do back stitches into that or simply just chuck it under the sewing machine. But any other yarn, any superwash, any alpaca, any cotton, any, any, any other thing, so sorry machine seams, just some zigzags. There are different opinions on how that should be done and I don't sew so I couldn't really tell you, but it's very nice when they make a heavier weight yarn that you can just cut through without any of that faff. Cause that's really been lacking for a while now. Yeah, I see a lot of potential, a lot of cardigans, a lot of yummy things. So I am excited. I hope I really hope this is going to be readily available internationally, but I can't really promise anything there. Obviously, I am not Hillis Vogue. And if I could just tell them what to do, I would obviously make sure that their yarn shop, or that at least they were wholesaling into a yarn shop, they had all their yarns, because their yarn is amazing. But keep your eye out for Toll and Wool, and hey, maybe, maybe you sold on it with Attitude. Do you want to stock it? I don't know. I can't really tell you what they're planning. Speaking of Knit with Attitude, my local yarn shop, um, I mentioned it in the last episode and it doesn't really hurt repeating that I am in their new book and I think it's up for sale. I linked it in the last episode, I'm going to link to it again. I have a pattern in there. It's this full-on colourwork sweater with very big needles. It's a very quick knit. It's using the chunky weight pelt wool by Hillis Vogue and I'm really pleased with it. And it, like it is published and photographed by Lane. 
it I have never ever seen any of my knits presented in such a gorgeous way I mean I have sometimes I've worked with people who have you know I was gonna say do my work justice they've, they've gone beyond doing it justice it's, it's great um it's it's good I'm very very happy with it and I can't wait for you to see it I do keep your eyes peeled for that and yes Wow, that is all that I have for podcast content this week. I still don't know why we call these podcasts when podcasts are strictly auditory. But anyway, my video series, my knitting series. And I now want to talk about what we're doing on this channel. Yeah, big words. I wasn't planning on that, but I guess I'm kind of desperate to beef up this episode. And I do think it's good to just be a bit upfront when I'm planning to do because I don't like big surprises. I just, I want to know. So maybe you guys want to know what I'm planning. The Pierre Foss video was a indicator of the sort of things that I want to do now that I have a bit more time on my hands and I want to make more content or I want to diversify my content and it's something I have known that I wanted to do for a very long time and those of you who watch my lives will have already received some of the hints and basically yeah podcast episodes are going to continue like they're probably going to be shorter because I want to take some of the content of the podcast and just flesh them out a bit more so the PR first video was a good indicator of that is kind of how I want to launch my patterns from now on I want to show a little bit more I want to talk a bit more about it if there are any techniques or tutorials I will just chuck them in there as well obviously this is a very simple sweater so there wasn't any need for that this time around I also want to feature my projects in a bit more detail so that is designs by other knitting designers I already have some videos ready but they just I can't for various reasons put them up just yet I do also want to start making more educational content. Now, of course, I've always made accidentally educational content. I'd be just rambling about something at the end of a video if I found that I had more time, kind of like I'm doing now. But what I want to do in the future is actually to plan them, script them, have, you know, props or whatever. And I, have, I already have some ideas in mind. So two things I'm going to do. One is just general educational content. Well, three things. General educational content, like story time, anything history, history history related i also i'm gonna try to pluck up the courage to do tutorials i'm gonna do that there's gonna be sneaking tutorials somewhere down the line but i'm actually collecting clips of me sneaking cutting through um a lot of different things that can kind of compile it it's a, it's a whole thing third in addition to educational tutorial is a third category of educational which is going to be a series and it's going to be a series that sort of talks about stuff that we are expected to know as knitters that we may not know it's pretty straightforward i am going to talk more about that when i actually launch that series but yeah that's going to be fun <laughs> so yeah i'm looking to diversify the content a little bit but i don't want to like make it too much because i know with myself that when i subscribe to a lot of channels if one of the channels start to kind of produce a lot I struggle to keep up with them like it's easier to keep up with someone who makes one weekly video than someone who makes a tiny little bit every day so I'm not gonna do that <laughs> basically we're lucky if I'm still keeping up with a video a week maybe two and that's about it so yeah I'm excited I hope you will like it too I have a lot of plans like I said um we're just gonna basically have more knitting stuff, more educational, more featuring projects, more featuring designs, and a little bit more history, because I do have a lot of stuff up here that I need to get out there in a maybe more organized fashion than what I have done in the past. Because in the past, it's always been like, oh, just scroll back in my video, see if you can find it. I don't know, I mentioned it in some video, like last year, last summer or something, I don't know what the episode was called, I'm sorry. That's the sort of things that I need to maybe move a little bit away from, so it's easy to, to retrieve later on perhaps so yeah that's that's the plan for future skein and it's i hope you will enjoy it i just yeah full full speed ahead and all that stuff and so that's it that's all i have for you guys this episode and i hope you're all doing well i want to thank you all so much for still watching this video channel and i will see you guys next time bye